Hey, I'm Dave from Buyer Borrow Music. And I'm Will from Buyer Borrow Music. And today we are here to talk about underdog pedals. And we have assembled five pedals today that we're going to share with you guys. And the way we came up with this is uh, we collect a lot of data at Buyer Borrow Music around what items our members want to borrow. We know what's really popular and we see what's trending. But we also see sometimes what's not trending. But knowing that we touch these products on a day-to-day -day basis, we actually uh, sometimes know what's what's really cool that doesn't get enough attention. And so what we did today was pick five pedals uh, that we think are really cool um, that don't get enough love. Uh, and we see that in the request data for, for borrowing. So um, what we're going to do today, we're, we're going to go on a journey together because we, we're familiar with these pedals, but we've never put them all five together. So we're going to see a little bit of what happens. Uh, this is not going to be an in-depth review on any one of the five. Moreover, just kind of telling you what the pedal is all about, why we think it's cool, why we think it's underrated, and then Will's going to play some sound samples. Yeah. So let's dive in. Cool. And uh, we're just going to start from from sort of right to left here on this board um, and talk about each of them. The first one we're going to start out with is just a, a really classic overdrive that I, I feel like doesn't get enough love, but it's the Mojo Hand DMBL. And if you're wondering what DMBL stands for, it's a, it's a Dumble clone. It's a Dumble and a pedal. Um, and most of you, if you're familiar with Dumbles, you kind of know the history and the legacy, but these are highly coveted amps uh, from the late 80s, 90s. Uh, they were all handmade, sort of Fender style circuit that have been in the hands of people like Stevie Ray, Eric Clapton, um, you know, John Mayer, all your, all your, you know, Robin Ford, all your, your guitar gods. The rock and roll heroes. Yeah, that, that have played these amps. But uh, what I love about this pedal is it's just an incredible drive in a box. And you can really do the always on kind of thing with it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to let Will start out. We're going to begin with gain very low, sort of kind of using it as a always on kind of drive. Now this switch in the up position gives you a very flat EQ with a little bit more bottom end. I'm going to flip it down later, and that is going to give you more of a mid-range focus sound, so a little bit more martially or a little more uh, British. But we'll start out kind of here. Maybe just give a clean tune. So we're going to click it on. down real quick. Yep. And you know, man, what I love about that too, I mean, if you're hearing the dynamics. Hopefully you're listening to this on a decent set of speakers and not your iPhone, but in the room, the dynamics of this are really cool. Oh yeah. And you, I mean, you can feel it right under yeah, the hands. Totally. And, touch, very touch sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's what I think makes these, you know, pedals really cool. And again, going back to, you know, the always on, on the flat setting, gain low, this is just a great sound to just keep on all the time underneath an amp, you know, and you kind of go through a little more of this. <laughs> Just keeps it very subtle, but gives it just like the tasteful touch of crunch that you need just to bring out your clean tones a lot. It can act really well if you use it just as your regular gain or just as a clean boost. Yeah. You know, so I've always been a fan of the Morning Glory. I still think it's a great pedal, but forgive me, Josh Scott, sometimes I feel like this is almost everything I wish I could sometimes get out of the morning glory. And I yeah. really dig the fact that you have the tone stack. And I think that's really what makes this unique is instead of just a single tone, you're really able to get in there and dial in the treble and the bass and kind of Absolutely. make it fit your amp. So I don't know. One of my favorite underdog pedals. Certainly one of my favorites too. Definitely something that needs to be added to more borrow lists. Gotta say. Agreed. Up next right here, we've got the Data Corruptor. And this, of the more popular, less popular items that we have, it is definitely one that is underrated. That can 
easily be because it just sounds so crazy. Like, I'm just going to crank this up to 10 basically on everything real quick. So obviously that's a lot of noise and that doesn't leave you a lot to work with. But if you turn down the subharmonic as well as the oscillator where you're just getting the square fuzz, that'll be it coming through. You can get a really cool square fuzzy tone out of that. Yeah. And I think this one in general too, not only underdog, but misunderstood. 100%. And, and maybe would be even helpful to kind of dive in for those that aren't familiar with the Data Corrupter. It is basically a synthesizer in a box. Got your LFOs. Got your LFOs. You've got different uh, oscillators that are happening here, both a main oscillator and a subharmonic oscillator so that you can actually stack uh, different um, pitches as we go through. Yeah, so, so one of the things that we'll walk you through is just sort of how this works with the oscillators, how you can apply it to a guitar, but you could really plug anything into this. Yeah, 100%. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this master oscillator. It's on the two, which is going to be an octave up with the unity. We're going to turn the oscillator mix up and we're going to play that. We're going to put this down right here. So our root, that's going to be the just regular square fuzz signal going through is going to be played an octave down. and It's going to be oscillating with the octave up unity. So what's fun about that as well is that using this rate with the glide setting, you can adjust the speed of which the glide would come down after the oscillation. So let's kind of listen to that. Hear that kind of yeah. come out at the end of it. It's, it's really cool and gives you a little bit more options sonically. But with that being said, let's jump into the subharmonics. So we're going an octave up. Let's just jump an octave down, shall we? And one quick note about this too, this pedal is monophonic, not polyphonic, but with stacking these oscillators, you do get these cool like, you know, up an octave a fifth or a major third. I mean, yeah. you, can, you can do that here and kind of create a, a really cool texture. And, and much like a, you know, a regular synth, you're able to blend all of that. So again, you've got your standard signal blend here on the, the voice mix, the subharmonic and the master oscillator so you can kind of create a palette of how you want to blend all this together. Absolutely. Because we're playing so many octaves with the same note, it almost gives it a chorusy effect, but let's yeah. try number four, which will be a major third played two octaves down. So that should give it more, more quality. <laughs> Another exciting feature of this following the glide is if you flip that down, you can do the vibrato, which will give it some insane textures. Let's play with that a little bit. crazy what i love especially about this pedal is that it really bridges the line between impractical and practical where you can get yeah, your regular totally. square fuzzy sounds but then you can get totally out of this world just who even knows what to call that kind of sounds <laughs> it, it's it's like a glitched robot <laughs> like really? if like if, like if a robot survived a nuclear disaster totally like that's, totally like that's what's in this pedal and uh i get in heavy like muse vibes oh out so of this, you so know, it's just really like Matt Bellamy. That's oh, it. You very really much so, very some, much so. Get some of those cool, cool tones here. Going off of the subharmonics we've got there, we've got this octaverse where you can add an upper octave or lower octave to your reverb. Yeah, uh, and this one is it's really interesting. It's uh, 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 octave me, delay. Uh, delay, correct. And this is another one from our friends at Mojo Hand. I, I don't feel like this brand gets enough love in general. But the thing that makes this so cool is that it is, uh, you can either pick an octave up or an octave down on your delay repeats and it's reverse. So not only is it like an octave delay, it's a reverse octave delay, which 
I have never found anything else in the market. No, no. I, I mean, maybe somebody put in the comments if you know of something else. I don't know of any other pedal on the planet that will do this. So mm. I think it's going to be a treat for you to, to hear it. Let's play around. textural things yeah i love how the rhythms can kind of blossom out of yeah. it too I, I really dig that and if, if you're looking sort of at the pedal i know that rate and feedback can be a little confusing but basically think about this as time and repeats i mean it's just a different way of yeah. saying the same thing so you turn this up we're going to be maximizing our repeats mm -hmm. let's turn that down and speed it up a little bit let's get this mix up so we can get some more of that dry signal in there as well is it will really ride that fine line of self-oscillation mm -hmm. where you can keep it really kind of going without it just going wild and out of control. Yeah. And then also, you know, trying the different settings here. So that was, we were doing all this with the up octave. Let's, let's try it with the down and really hear kind of what happens there. So I'm going to play around as you play here, Will. So so excuse that was, me, that was backwards. Octave, I'm yeah. sorry. That was, that was all meant. We had a down octave. This will be up on the up octave. Fun. That sounded really awesome out there at the end. Yeah, and you know, pedals like this sort of lend to tweaking on the fly. You know, I mean, yeah. if, if you're really into these shoegaze kind of thing and you want to get your hands on your pedals while you're playing them, this this is a fun one to play with. But again, it's it's a it's a really interesting sort of one trick kind of pony thing. But yeah. it's I feel like again, there's nothing else on the market that does what this does. Mm. So definitely underdog, underrated. Certainly. You want to do the rubberneck? Sure, let's dive into it. Cool. So rubberneck, kind of as before we hit in. Um, analog delay, uh, DOD's imagination of it. But what's really interesting about this is, <clears throat> first of all, I, I would love this if it even didn't have some of the kind of quirky features like the rubber neck, which will actually sort of bend the repeats and the time and give this sort of like rubber band kind of feel to the delay. But even if you set that to the side, this thing sounds just friggin' killer as a standalone analog delay. And I love that not only have you got adjustments for tone, so you're able to you know really dial in. Do you want a dark, warm, crunchy delay? Do you want it nice and bright for repeats? But you've also got gain, so you can really get in here and determine on those repeats. Do you want it to get crunchy? Do you want to stay nice and pristine? It's got all those features. I love the big knobs because it just again it lends itself to getting down here and kind of tweaking on the fly. It is a little big on the board, but you've got things like uh, trails, <laughs> so you can set your trails on or off, and tap tempo. So not a lot, of, a lot of other delays that have one and a half seconds, which is wild for an analog delay. Really? One and a half seconds of delay plus the tap tempo um, is just pretty crazy. So I'm going to turn it on. We're going to start out with some just basic delay sounds, and then I'll get into the sort of the rubberneck feature, which is kind of the quirkiness of it. Thank you. 
so you can see here, kind of as I'm playing around, I, I was playing with the, the uh, sort of uh, modulation section of this. So you've got your classic controls, great right in depth. Um, can go mild to wild. You can have it really subtle, like we started out with, versus you know, kind of toward the end when I was turning up the, the depth uh, is really cool. But again, you kind of hear me when I pull that gain knob up. You, you could not only tell how the, the texture of the delay changes right. to crunchy, but it also just it drives those repeats. Absolutely. Uh, again, like almost to the really early self oscillation on this thing. Yeah, pretty crazy. Washing itself out a lot in that regard. Yep, for sure. So. Let's try it again. I'm going to get a little bit crazier with the modulation section. Yeah. And I'm going to take gain down a bit so it's not quite so crunchy. Bring up the tone just so we can really hear the repeat. And I'll sort of play around with the, the modulation section here. All right. That, that is what makes this really cool. And again, you, you can really, with these two knobs, I mean, a lot, most delays now, I mean, you get full featured ones, you can get all the, your controls over your modulation section, but there's just a lot to play with here. And it also is really musical. Like when I'm dialing it in big, I mean, it's got that cool, almost kind of like rotary speaker yeah. kind of feel to it. That yeah. I think is really, really wild. Um, what do you think, man? What's your take? Awesome. Definitely an underrated delay. I would say a little bit, overwhelming with all the controls and the rubber neck options but it's nice to have the leverage of being able to just go absolutely as crazy as you want being able to dial it back and just have even just a simple delay just a cut and dry delay totally speaking of rubber neck you want to play around with it shoot yeah let's, let's hit go it. into it so let's let's neck it <laughs> That's what makes the big knobs so fun cool. is you can get your hands on it and really tweak it out, man. I I don't know. Again, the rubberneck, take it for what it is. Like it's kind of cool. I don't really know where you'd put it to use. Put it practically, in maybe one or two spots in a set. Yeah, just to kind of add something crazy. And so you've got, if you notice, when I'm hitting the button here, <clears throat> it's triggered by the stomp. You'll see the the light turn red, and that's when it activates. You've also got this knob to adjust how quickly it reacts, so the rate of how fast it comes down and then back up it's it's gimmicky it's cool whatever certainly yeah. but again i would buy this freaking thing or borrow it just to literally have the controls you've got here the ability to dial in the gain the crunch the rate and the depth all that is great if, if i'm if i'm picking one pedal from this board i'm just gonna go ahead and say it that's the one i'm that's the one i'm gonna take out of the of the entire underdog it's the one you're walking out of here with i think i think that's i think that's my one i just i'm a delay guy i love that so Tell us, tell us about the Red Panda Context. So the Red Panda Context is a it's a reverb pedal, but it's got some hidden delay in there. So just looking at it, it's a, a mess of words. 
But what's interesting about it is that you have the main fe features labeled in white, but you can hold down the shift button and adjust all these blue little features right here. So that being like the balance right here, which will be the between the reverb and the delay, you can adjust the delay, the speed of the delay, feedback of the delay, as well as some modulation things you can do. Mm -hmm. But let's just jump right into it. Yes, sure. I want a regular and room. Let me make sure we got this guy off. There we go. I'm just going to cut it up to 12 o'clock. And what are we starting out here? Was that uh, Cathedral? Yeah, oh, yeah. Let's, start with, let's start with the room. Wait, the room. Okay. fun to mess around with and if, if you guys have never heard of this before the whole basis of this is old 80s rack reverb units like that's where red panda came up with all this. they use that as inspiration to make something that was really cool you could put it in a pedal and what i love about our friends at red panda is they just do interesting stuff super <clears> interesting and find a way to put a whole lot of power into a single box and usually more often than not really tiny pedals too oh yeah just crammed full Full of fun effects. Yeah, very, very small footprint. Tons and tons of options that you can pull out of these. Um, so we'll, let's just start going through them. I'll, I'll dial through. We'll, I'll kind of play around with some settings here. Start it out with a room. Again, you can kind of take the decay down, make it real tight. Yeah. But let's go up to the hall and kind of start there. Just and a little bigger. And work, yeah, and work up a bit. We've also got EQ here on the left-hand side <clears throat> as well. So high and low, I can dial in. And I think there's also some secondary functions for ducking, right? Yeah. If you want Reverb ducking. Yeah, you can use the, if you hold the shift button, you can adjust these knobs over here to adjust the ducking of it, which adds a little bit more interesting dynamic that you can get out of this pedal, which just, you know, it's it's really deep. On the surface, this pedal, it, there's already obviously a lot on there, but it goes way deeper than I initially realized. But regardless, let's jump into it. longer decay settings <clears throat> it can really get resonant too yeah in there which is is pretty cool um let's keep going around we could easily make an entire video on this one pedal so we're just gonna hit some highlights i'm gonna but jump down here to the spring so that's where i was hoping you would go <laughs> with, with the spring we can use this moderate to get a, a tremolo effect out of it which has very interesting retro sound <laughs> It's a, it's a good substitute for like a Strymon Lex or any sort of tremolo pedal. Oh yeah, it's 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 great, and I think it it just nails you know that sort of Fender sixties Fender yeah, kind of thing. Where, absolutely. I mean, why do you buy those amps? You want really good spring reverb, and you want great tremolo, and I feel like you get it both here in one pedal. So you, you notice too when I was adjusting this, I was hitting the shift knob, and that then turns this knob into the rate, so you can actually control both rate of modulation and amount of modulation in the one single knob. I think that's wonderful. That's one of my favorite settings. Sure. Yeah. Um, you want to try grain or anything else? Oh yeah. Let's here? let's let's get a little bit granular. Let's play with that one a little bit. So, something to note is that a lot of these on here don't the uh, mod knob doesn't do anything. It does affect the spring and the reverse. 
however, but that being said, let's hop into the grade. Just so many options. Again, Endless. so much. Uh, you want to try the delay just so we can kind of dive into that yeah, a little bit? Let, let, so I'm going to put it back on room just so we got a really subtle kind of classic reverb here. <clears throat> but what I'll do is I'm going to hit shift here, and this balance is going to sort of choose how much reverb, how much delay we've got mm -hmm. here. And then I'll kind of dial this in as you play just to kind of get some examples yeah. of this here. Honestly, it's again, it's the amount of stuff that Red Panda can pack into a single pedal. And even as a standalone delay, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's it's digital and it's, I mean, it's pretty, but if you're in, if you, that's what you want, if you want a nice, clean digital delay and here you go, it's packaged with a really fantastic reverb. Yeah. I mean, you, you got a lot. I don't know why this one is underdog. This one, I feel like if more people knew about it and isn't, it, it is intimidating. And absolutely think, <clears throat> absolutely i think that might be why we don't see more people jumping toward it just because there's a lot to do and you kind of got to sit down and read the manual right but once you do yeah but hopefully this was able to clear up a lot of the mystique behind that pedal hopefully it ends up on a lot more bar lists because of it i totally agree and and just a, a shout out in general to red panda because i this is one of a lot of their pedals that i love yeah i mean like the rasta is one of my favorite delays mm -hmm. uh, out it's there got a the cool market. wall also <clears throat> yeah i mean there's there's just so many options that these guys do um things like the particle if you want to get into the granular yeah. stuff you know um just if, if i was to pick a brand on this board <clears throat> that's very underdog red panda i red feel like panda. they don't get enough love yeah, Don't same same blocking. can be said for Mojo Hand as oh, well. Oh yeah, totally. And these guys are really you know radar like low level, but uh, just make a lot of great stuff. Um, but yeah. So anyway, what's your pick, man? What are you taking? What are you taking home? <laughs> the one that I'm walking home with has got to be the Octaverse. Yeah, yeah. I just think that it suits me really well. Just being able to jump between the octaves really well and being able to leverage that. Maybe let's say with another octave like a Digitech Whammy, being able to play between the different octaves gives you a, a lot of sonic leverage. I think. Yeah. Cool. Well, we appreciate everybody hanging out with us today as we just noodle around and go through these really cool pedals. Uh, if you're interested in checking any of these out, definitely go to our site. The, any of these are available to borrow. Uh, our plans start at as little as $19 a month, and that gets you the ability to swap out guitar pedals every 30 days, grab something. If you found something you love, you can't live without it. It's a one-click purchase. Um, and we really love our members. We really try to you know, treat everybody in our club uh, with some love. And because we're all gear nerds, like we just love talking about this. Stuff oh, too, yeah. Right. And so, you know, if you if you're interested, you want to start a chat with us or something like that, let us know. More than happy to always talk gear. Always, always happy to nerd out on pedals. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for checking us out today. Hope to see you back next time. Take care.